Sexual violence actually can be widespread in armed conflict. It is often used as a tactics or a method of war. But the prosecution should be done to the, uh, according to the rule of law. Sexual violence actually can be widespread in armed conflict. Um, sexual violence as well is not only against women and girls, but it's also against men and boys. Um, when you have looting, when you have killings, when you have destruction of property, you can be sure that sexual violence also uh, is committed. Sexual violence is an invisible phenomenon because it's taboo, because of fear of reprisals, because of fear of rejection from the family or the community. They don't come forward to talk about it and they usually tend to keep silent. It is often used as a tactics or a method of war. And as the UN has already recognized, particularly uh, through the UN Security Council resolutions, sexual violence constitutes war crimes, constitutes uh, crimes against humanity, and can often act as a consecutive act in respect to genocide. Sexual violence can be uh, forced prostitution, can be uh, sexual enslavement, can be forced sterilization, and it can take uh, many different uh, horrendous and inhuman forms. So the consequences are huge and I would say grave and dehumanizing. You have um, the physical one, for example, sexually transmitted disease. Uh, they can have unwanted uh, pregnancies, they can uh, have incontinence or infertility, but you have also the psychosocial consequences. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder, you have distress, you have self-blame, you have depression, and then you have the last uh, consequence that is social consequences. It's like being rejected by your family, being stigmatized. Sexual violence can destroy the social fabrics, destroy the ties within the community. Especially uh, in patriarchal societies like in South Asia, uh, sexual violence can often be seen as the inability of the male population to give enough protection to the more vulnerable groups such as women, children or others. And uh, when it is uh, directed against men or boys, it can lead to a sense of emasculation. As far as sexual violence is concerned, there should be least amount of publicity given. But the prosecution should be done to the, uh, according to the rule of law. So that the people, are, the message is given to the village or to the society that if you commit sexual violence, that you will be prosecuted and you'll be punished. National justice system can act as a strong deterrent. If you have trained legal staff um, and if you have an effective mechanism to effectively investigate, repress, it can play an important role. First of all, we need to ensure women's greater participation in decision making, in peacekeeping activities, in peace building activities, and also in negotiating peace agreements. Uh, the issue of prevention is absolutely important and uh, for prevention uh, one particular element is to build this element as an uh, integral part of any training curricula of the security and law enforcement agencies. A second issue in uh, relation to prevention is to ensure prosecution an indictment of part perpetrators. And the last issue is, of course, rehabilitation and reintegration. We have to make sure that those who have been subjected to sexual violence are given adequate psychosocial support, given adequate legal support, and as need be, uh, adequate social protection so that uh, they can live a dignified life, they can live a life without stigma, and they can uh, rely upon themselves to further emancipate and empower their own lives and the lives of those around them.